The Baco S3 presentation switcher is an incredibly powerful screen management system. With the Skahoi Airfly Pro, you can make more of this raw strength available as a traditional broadcast switching workflow. And I'll show you that in this video. The idea is that with Airfly Pro, you can give a producer access to switch your sources in a portion of the managed screen area, safely and in ways familiar to him. We have worked closely with Baco to implement this workflow in the Event Master line. So I want to show you how the Airfly Pro out of the box is actually able to set this all up from the menu. That's quite unique. So right now we have just turned it on. It does say connected and it is connected, but if we go into the menu, you will see that it is actually searching for units on the network. So if you had one or more event masters on the network, they would appear in this list and you would basically scroll through the options and pick it. Next thing you would do is to go here and then search for screen destinations. Now, those of you who knows about the event master series know that screen destinations is something you set up inside because it is managing a screen. And you see here on my monitor, the, the screen is like a large wide screen canvas. This is what we have today. And we are going to make a little portion of that a production switcher window, okay? So the screen is 3840 by 1080 P50. And that could be multiple screen destinations. So on this encoder knob, we are now picking the one that we have. If we had multiples, there would be more options in this menu, but we now pick this one. Okay, so that is in place. That was preset in the Event Master tool set. As you have selected your screen destination, we need to create layers because on that screen destination, we need a mixed layer and on top of that single layers, which would be like keyers. So in this way, the event master allows you to build your broadcast switcher. You, you build your MEs, you put that layer in and you assign any, as many keyers as the system resources allow you to do. So you press the create button and then you can create a key and maybe we want to have another key. So now we have two keyers and we have a mix effect layer under that so we can make transitions. All right, quickly for those of you who know this, those layers we just created are right here, down here. And okay, let me just add one more key, right? And now you see an additional layer four was created for key number three. Let's look at the next steps we need to to go into. Um, actually, I want to show you that we have some sources already. We also have a nice multi-viewer setup. We have a logo bug with a Skahoy logo, and we have some input sources that plays back concert recordings. So we can imagine we are at a concert and we want to show that on a portion of our screen. So after having done the selection of screen destination, we can go to the setup where we can map sources. So these sources that I just showed you needs to be mapped down on the keys. So we press here and now we get a row of buttons we can push to actually assign sources down. So if I take player one, I could assign that to number one. Player two could be assigned to this one over here player three to this one. So they're basically a mapping function by you by selecting the source up here, you'll just map it down quickly and easily. But we also do have an auto map function. So if I press this one over here, it will just take the video sources and map down for your convenience. And if I hold down shift, I can also remove them again so I can clear it out. There are management functions like that involved in this. That's really cool. And by the way, you can do the same for queues and for presets. I'll get back to that a little bit, although it's not the main subject in this video. And you know what? There is other videos in our YouTube channel, which deals in detail with those um, features like queues and presets. And we'll show you how that works. Now, I do want not only my sources for player one, two, and three to appear here. I also want my logo, my Skahoy logo. So I'll just pick that and map onto this key. I am ready right now. So I will exit the menu like this, and here we are, we still have these screens and there's nothing on them, but I'll now put something on preview, you see, and let's also put something on program. So we have now source one and three on preview and program on the screen destination. Hmm, it's on the left side, I wanna move it. So this is what we have this joystick for, and you can see as I'm pressing down on the joystick pad on the Airfly Pro, I'm actually able to move around the window on screen. So this is the whole layer stack we're moving. It is a part of the management we're doing, that is the layers that we have created. We are entitled to move them around and make sure that their size is consistent, which also means that I can scale them up 
or I can scale them down into a smaller window. So let, let me just do that. Okay, we do have it on a, on a black background, just for clarity. But of course, you can imagine that the widescreen background has other videos or a background graphic or whatever. It's none of our business. Our business is that little window that we have defined, which is where the video stack, the, the broadcast which we have created is essentially managed. So we can move it around, we can scale the size, and we can manage the sources inside. So broadcast switcher style, I select preview, I press cut, and it cuts. Now I select another source in preview, and I press cut. Oh, that was a bad source, that was my logo. Actually, maybe I should go into the menu again. Map sources, okay, let me just pick that one. Hold down shift, move that uh, uh, around, because it turns out that the Skahoy logo should probably be out there on the side, just not to mix it up with the proper video sources. Let's explore the standard broadcast functions like cut, auto, etc. So I can cut, select another preview source, cut, select another preview source. Now I could press auto. So I press auto and it makes an auto transition, auto again, it makes a transition here. I press this one and now I want to use the T-bar to show you that we can create this slow transition between those two sources using the T-bar. And there we go, the T-bar transition is also possible in this. That T-bar transition is working only on the layers that we are engaged with, so as you would expect. There is also the toggle function, so if we turn this on, you see another part of the workflow, which is as I press the cut button, the sources are swapping around, okay? And uh, that, that's kind of how I think most vision mixes are working, that there's this uh, swap of the sources. So you can enable and disable that on this button up here. And of course now we are, yeah, as you can see, it does this as expected. I want to see how the keyers work, okay? So let's enable one of the keyers. We can take key uh, three, doesn't matter. But Kia 3 is now enabled. There's nothing on Kia 3, but that's what we are assigning using the buttons up here. So the logo bug, I want to assign that to Kia number 3, which I have right now. And I will get, as I press the auto button now, I will get that trend, that logo faded in. So let's just try it, and we see the Skahoy logo is faded in on the program. I am able now still to do my uh, broadcast switch operation down here. So select another source on preview, make a cut, select another source, make an auto transition, and it's all nice. The moment I want to take that logo off, I'm basically just removing the Kia on the preview, and then I can press auto, and it is fading the logo out again. So that is program, preview, T-bar, auto, cut, if I hold down shift, the cut button becomes red. That means it does the all trans transition, which some of you will know. If you know the event master, you know that all trans is like across all screen destinations, I believe. And um, that, that's why it's hidden under shift, uh, but it is available. Okay, and then I want to show you inside the menu what else you can do because that's the main functions, but inside of map sources, you can also choose map presets and map queues. I'm afraid I don't have queues and presets today, but you could have essentially like up to four pages of presets and queues that you can map onto these buttons and then page through these, I think with a zoom rocker here. And that means not only does it allow you to do traditional broadcast switching with keys, but you can also work with your queues and your presets on the Airfly Pro at the same time. Eventually we have like a reset all because the unusual thing is that on this box we have added the search for event masters on the network and allowing you to to pick them from inside that menu. But you can also clear out all data on this one. So if I do that, clear data and I exit, you'll see we are back to normal. Well, you also do have to clear it inside the event master toolset. But uh, so for instance, if you want to to deal with these or to remove these layers, you would select all of these layers and then you would delete the selected and now you have a blank slate, if you will. And you can go through this process like we just did a moment ago by assigning sources, picking the screen destination, creating the layers and the keys, etc. I want to end the video by showing you Reactor. Reactor is our wonderful backend on the Airfly Pro. It, this is running out of the Airfly Pro. This does not need any computer. It talks directly to the S3 over here. It has this web UI inside it. And this is the backhoe 
device call that talks to this one and it is the IP address of this one you set from this panel basically. So the message here is that you don't need to, to go into this UI to actually use the Airfly Pro with the Event Master. You do need to go to the Event Master tool set to set up your screen destinations to make sure that your layer stack is uh, empty when we create it or at least if you want to manage it, you want to clear it out. If you did another gig yesterday, then you clear out the Airfly Pro, you go in there and you also remove your layers or set that up separately. And by the way, you can have other layers completely independently of the Airfly Pro. That, that's kind of the point that we only manage the layers we create on the Airfly Pro. But inside of Reactor, you have the home screen here, you have configuration tab where you can pick keys on the Airfly and then you can overlaid with actions from other devices because you can add other devices that Skahoy is supporting. We have like two, oh, is it three or 400? I think it's at, I think it's two or 300 plus devices, cameras, video routers, switches, audio devices that you can actually mix in in the configuration by using the, um, you have a paging paradigm, you have a user section where you can overlay these keys with whatever you want and still run that underlying curated configuration that we have developed alongside uh, with Baco. Simulation tool, we have packages for software upgrades. There is a system setting for IP and so on. You probably need to go in there unless you want to run on DHCP, but those settings are in there and just need a one-time attention. After that, you can run your daily show by just change the things from the menu. Thanks for watching this video. Remember, we have more videos about the S3 and Event Master integration right here on our YouTube channel. So if you want more details, please search it up. And also, if you like the content here, please like and subscribe to stay in touch with us. Feel free also to reach out to our sales and support team anytime for more questions.